All right, let's see if you got the magic touch. Yeah, that sounds really dead. Can you roll call and you're over? Well, hey all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. You've been asking for it, you've been waiting for it, and there is more rubber rescue coming your way right now. Seriously, and it's not just gonna be me fooling around on mine. We have a new Range Rover coming your way. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. We're going up to Northern Virginia to pick it up this evening. It is something that is a unicorn, something that was never ever available in the United States, and even something that wasn't available in the UK where it was made at the time. It's a 93, okay, so it's late. It's two doors, so something that was never available in the United States. It's a diesel, also something never available in the United States. And it's a manual, once again, something that you never could have bought, bought in the US. We never got Range Rovers in this country till 87, uh, other than gray market. And so they all came as four door V8s. But the, the Range Rover started in 1970 as a two door. As a V8, they didn't have the diesel till later, but this is, I believe it's a Spanish import. They only made the two doors for Spain and France at the end of production of the classic model because those countries seem to like them. I love two-door SUVs. I had a full-size Bronco from the OJ era uh, in college and that was just great. Uh, it was rusty because it was old, but hey, it was fun. And so we're going up uh, to pick it up and drive it back and come along for the journey because hey, it's got functioning air conditioning as far as we know on a diesel with a stick shift and only two doors. I can't wait to see this. I've never been in a two-door Range Rover. Even the ones I've seen overseas, I've just never ridden in a Range Rover outside of this country. So let's see what a two-door Range Rover is like. Is that an why, RS? Why, oh, that's a, why, why is there a Phantom parked on this street? <laughs> that's a new Phantom. And what's with all these buses and, uh, wow. Maybe this is why they're located up here. <laughs> yeah, there, obviously there's a lot of money and stuff going on up here, I guess. Uh, we back here? This is it? I don't I don't see any Range Rovers. <laughs> they're all inside. Oh, they're inside. Oh, oh yeah, Commonwealth Classics, nice. This is Well, this is not what I was expecting. I thought it would be like sitting out front. This is definitely different. Uh, I hope the guy's still here will let us in. Or is it open? <laughs> nice. Oh. Ooh. Hi, Kurt. Tom? Hi there. Hey, Michael. Michael? Michael? Here for Range Rover. Okay. One second. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Okay, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. <laughs> Here's JR. Okay, um, we just put the batteries in it, so we just start right up. I need you to... Nice, it's got sliding rear windows. There's that stick shift. That's cool. Wow, I mean, it's got the same dash as mine, but it's cloth interior. Wow. It's just got the sliding rear windows? Yeah, That's pretty cool. This is, this is good. This looks really nice. I wish I'd bid. <laughs> <laughs> what, just to outbid him? <laughs> and we never got these wheels here either. Like, we never got those slotted steel wheels at all. Yeah, so. Ah, uh, Portugal, okay. I thought it was Spain, my bad. Nice Hellas. Check out the back. Yeah. Never see that in this state in this country before. <laughs> uh, it's got the very basic door cards, yeah. Oh, no, it is a 911. We were wondering if this is a 911 or 912. Cool. A little Chevy over there. Wow. Race car. It's got the scaffolding in the back. Really cool. <laughs> I mean, who'd have thunk it? Well, actually, we knew this was here, but... Nice. I mean, the velour. It's in really nice shape. Like, it really is. It doesn't have any funky smells or anything. 
dash is nice. It's, ooh, a kilometer. Speedo, up to 200. I don't think that's going to get that high, but uh, you never know. That's definitely an aftermarket knob that looks like from like an Audi or something almost, or some kind of VW VAG uh, vehicle. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to need to take that with us just, just to get home. <laughs> Oh, it's even got a yeah, center armrest. It's cool. It's the same, like, upright headresty seats, but in cloth. This place is really cool. This is a, this is a toy box for, uh, for adults. Uh, I really like the fact that <laughs> I got to come along on this and help pick up this very special 200 TDI one-year-only diesel model. And I think Mike's going to have a blast with it, but we'll see. And let's hope he makes it back, because uh, once he does the paperwork, we got 100 miles to drive in rush hour traffic. <laughs> Good thing the AC works. That looks a little different than what we're used to. Also, it's clean. <laughs> yeah, definitely has AC. But yeah, it's, it's... They still have the canister, but it's way over here. That's funny. It's in Israeli or something? It's in Israeli? Uh, that really Arabic. No, that's Arabic, yeah. Our den green. If you didn't get any of the good ARB stuff, we should probably return it and take this one instead. There definitely is something cool about uh well that has wood grain, which is cool, but yeah, the the hella driving lights on on the old Z. I approve. Also we're trying to figure out why this long wheelbase has the old school grill on it, but I'm guessing they just put it on because they had one. I don't think it actually came on that. And let's see, it is an original dash. It is not a soft dash. So it's gotta be pre-95. Really is interesting that on this late model, they still had exterior hinges, I guess because it's a two-door, they probably never bothered redesigning the door because they just didn't sell that many. But yeah, this is a 93, so it would have internal door hinges. Yeah. See anything? Yeah. I don't even see the, the nice coating of oil and power steering fluid like mine has. There's a little bit of a leak. Well, yeah, but it's... I'm going to pull it out front here for you. Sure. Uh, I'll put it up on the Man, that's a tractor motor for sure. No Ranger Rover I've ever driven sounded like that, that's for sure. <laughs> I think, uh, well, mine's louder, but that's because I have the exhaust leak. <laughs> Ooh, it's... We got the British Atlantic... Uh... Oh, the mud flaps? Mud flaps? Yeah. <laughs> Going out into the sun. You can definitely feel it vibrating. <laughs> it's such an unusual sound for me to hear. It sounds like a 1980s Mercedes. It should be right here. Super clean. It's missing a bunch of cylinders, though.
That really does sound like a like a Mercedes. Wow. Look how much it's vibrating. It's just amazing. It's just such a I realize any of you who are watching this overseas think this is normal, but this is something I've never experienced before. Diesel Range Rover just doesn't exist. It just doesn't. It really just doesn't. It's such an unusual. That's why I'm like gushing over this thing. And it's in really good shape. Wow. The carpets are nice and clean. Upholstery's in really good shape too. I mean, for being this velour. Clutch pedal is a little bit worn. <laughs> I bet that's going to be a hard thing to find on uh, Rivers Mountain. This. this little trip computer <laughs> thing. It smells like a 90s cloth Nissan in here. <laughs> it smells like Centro. <laughs> yeah, it smells like Maxima. What? It's a very specific... Uh, Maxima, yeah. Uh, I guess it's not a car it's, that I can just ride. It's idling at 1500, wow. I need to figure out what this headliner is, because I would love one like that. What is, uh, it's, I don't know if it's custom to this, but... It's probably for two-door model only, this headliner. It's like terry cloth almost. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like it's, it, I mean, it's rough. It feels like a washcloth. That's weird. This is but, sweet. Yeah, it, it's really. This is cool. It's really cool. The thing that gets me, I mean, these, these door cards are just like two pieces of vinyl and that, and like nothing else. I mean, it's just so unus unlike what what we got. Oh, it's utilitarian. It's awesome. It's yeah, it's totally utilitarian, even though it's yeah, still the luxurious. Like it's actually yeah. pretty solid unless they beef that up. Oh yeah, you. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's been off, like they would have put more foam underneath it. Hop inside real quick. It's got all the usual updated stereo, of course. The AC actually is on, it looks like, but I guess the fan's not on high, which is what uh, causes it to work properly. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that sticker to replace would probably be difficult. I still think, I got a better view of this, the shifter. Volkswagen product? Let me know in the comments what you think. There's no way that came this way from the factory, but it's pretty cool anyway. I mean, the, the sills are in really nice shape. They're not totally rotten. I mean, there's there's some cracking and stuff in them, but really nice shape. Uh, I mean, you can even see like right there, there's just a tiny little bit of dirt even. I don't even think it's actually rust. And I love how this is in Portuguese. Like, good luck ever finding another one of those stickers. Those are what, like $150 online? Oh, are they really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the backseat's got plenty. I mean, it's the same wheelbase as it's a 100 inch car, so. You can get the AC working with that. Resistor. Door sounds good. <laughs> we drove here in a diesel, and we're driving home in two diesels. That's fantastic. That's the first time in the history of the US that's ever happened. Yeah, that's really good. That's a nice color. First time driving. Let's see. Don't stall it, right? Don't stall it, yeah. What? Well, yeah. How many people in the U.S. have stalled a stick shift Range Rover? <laughs> Nobody. The AC blows nice and cold. It really does. So the first stop is to get some diesel. They don't stall. Oh, he, the cop's turning. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> don't stall in front of the cop. We'll, we'll what, what's with those Portuguese plates you have on there? <laughs> Sir, you're going to have to step out of the vehicle. <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> you said Exxon or something, right? It says they have Oh, they do? Yeah. Yeah, I see green straight back. Got to use that first key. <laughs> Uh, I think it has to be off to be able to open the yeah. thing, right? Okay. You gonna the, fill up uh, the Audi with diesel too? No, right? Yeah. <laughs> the Land Cruiser over there with the with the plow on it? No. Let's go take a look. Land Cruiser with a plow. What generation? Oh wow. Oh yeah, four door one, nice. It's got like later forerunner wheels maybe or something? 
Can't tell. Third gen. A little bit of rust. Oh, of course. Oh, it's got an old New York inspection and registration. No wonder. <laughs> Side exhaust. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this isn't quite Corsetti Cruiser territory, but uh, it's it's El Jefe. <laughs> uh, the fun things you see at gas stations in small towns in Northern Virginia. This is a cute little town, by the way. I highly recommend checking out Marshall, Virginia. There's just good a plenty. Here's a an SVX in bright red. I don't even remember these being in bright red. I had a friend in high school. Hey Ben, his dad had one in that color, but it was this car. That's amazing. Bright red. Some aftermarket BBS wheels. A lot of tint. Cool car. Well, that's good. At least you had almost a full tank in there. <laughs> this thing's got to be able to make it a, f a few hundred miles on diesel, I would think. Like, at least 300 on a full tank. It's probably a 20 gallon like the other ones. Definitely not as many miles as the Q7. Uh, make <laughs> I'm sure that'll go a thousand miles in one tank because it's modern. Especially when you're driving with a Portuguese tag, you probably want to check all the lights. The brake lights definitely worked. I saw those when he was leaving. Those it doesn't have the center one. But no, it doesn't even have it. No. Yeah, man, those tires are some pizza cutters, that's for sure. They're not too old though. No, no, they they can't be old. They still got the Injection mold screws on yeah, them. Yeah, the other one next to it, they, went, they still said Portugal on it. Uh oh. Well, we made it this far. Uh, I think we're 101 miles. My AAA covers 100 miles. Wow, we didn't bring a jumper, really. I think we know why the battery light was on. <laughs> yeah, it started right up for him. Oh man. See, Doug's like, yeah, I'm glad I came now. Now it's a river rescue. Yeah, now it's definitely a river rescue. <laughs> uh, these guys, it's probably have to jump. Oh yeah, yeah, they probably have to jump. Those, every single one over there probably needs to be jumped. So, use Carl out over there. I can't believe we didn't do it. That's gonna be the first comment. Was, you guys went and bought another rover, you didn't bring a rover jump box? Didn't think we would need one. So did we just jump this battery? Or the other one, because there's two batteries. Hey Tom, it's Mike. It's, uh, <laughs> so uh, we're down at the. Yeah, maybe they didn't put it on right, but I started up so nicely in the shop. Yeah. Where's and the... where's the other battery? It, I don't think it's in the back, but I don't know where else it could be. That side's open. So maybe underneath the panel here. No, there's n that's just that's just a panel and a tire. I don't see a battery in there at all. Where on earth would they hide the other battery? I would say leave a comment in the notes, but it'll be too late. We'll already have gotten back by then. Right. Success! We got a jump box. We got a going. Fire right up. So, yeah, uh, not switching this off again, that's for sure. Good thing it has a full tank of gas. So, so it was lo that was loose? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hand tight. They probably had it on tender. So it just wasn't getting a charge? Yeah. All right, well, hopefully. Hey, I know, hopefully. Range, I know Range Rovers now. I know you know Range Rovers. You know Range Rovers better than anybody, but like. <laughs> I don't know Range Rovers. I just know how to fix broken no. ones. Yeah, but you've had plenty of practice in the last two months. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully it's charging now. In case we need to stop again, <laughs> we might. Uh, well, we're heading back to the dealer. Was he just gonna tell us where the other battery is? He's gonna tighten it for us. Oh, he's gonna tighten it? Okay, good. Sure's a quaint little bird. Oops. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he can go the other way. And we're back. <laughs> it's fine when you when you turn the corner, the gimbal 
readjusted so it was at an angle. That's, oh, nice. Now it's now it's level. I'm still learning this thing. That's pretty cool. Well, we're off uh, after having been jump started again at the dealer. It's diesel, so it doesn't need any electricity to run. But it's also coming up on gonna need headlight time soon, so wish us luck. Uh, we'll check in later. <laughs> this could be interesting. <laughs> so, slight bit of death wobble uh, at anything approaching highway speed. You said free massage? Free massage. Free massage. <laughs> yeah, the entire vehicle starts shaking if you go above. It looks like, well, 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, like that. It's really does, it, does, it, does it smooth out if you go faster? We're doing 100 now, so. All right. I mean, I can still feel it in the floor a little bit, the shimmy, and the, and the gear stick. But I mean, that's something. What was that noise? <laughs> well, yeah, it was literally falling apart. It's a bit of a shimmy. Yeah, it was. It was so what, what? The entire wheel was moving, or something, or? The whole lot. I mean, like like on the red one. No, not that bad. I mean, they're all, the limits are all on. You can see the reds on each one. Well, is there any weights on the wheel? Yeah, because they've obviously been repainted. I don't see any wheel weights on it. Yeah, no wheel weights would do that. And weird pressures could do that, too. Yeah, but. I think about it. Not very tight. Not very tight. You're just strong, man. Should I point out the star pattern thing, or? <laughs> I guess I won't. Oh yeah, that one loose. Well, it's probably more tire pressure. There's no, oh yeah, I don't see any little weights in Yeah. So it's just nice Ooh. new balance. Would be good. What's up? No steering shock. No steering shock. Yeah, yeah steering I think shock. the steering shock would definitely take care of that. Yeah, there is. It's on the back. Oh, is it? Oh, it's on the back. Oh, interesting. None of more? Good thing we did that well, before uh, getting on 95. actually nuts instead of the stupid ones that ours have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those huge ones. On. Yeah. I love how our car sense is now finally coming back in. <laughs> well, should, should so we did it. We did have a tool with us. It just happened to come with the car. The yeah. <laughs> the Audi probably opens up the bag and says, call Audi. Dude. Right, yeah. You can't change the bulbs on the Audi. You've got to have it. Call the dealer. Let's see, at least the side is going to be bad too. Oh, wrong way. I forgot I was on the other side of the car. Or just British uh, reverse thread. Yeah, reverse thread. Oh, well, that's definitely interesting. We finally made it to the 95 south on ramp, but this may take a while. <laughs> but it's run very well, and the steering's much better now. Uh, the steering's perfect at five miles an hour. At five miles an hour, yeah, but yeah, the the octagonal wheels are only the problem at 70. But so we've got a uh, let's see, 76 miles to go. I think this actually clears up once we can go a little bit more. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Please tell me he has the clicker. Well, it's 9.30, we made it back to the shop, but uh, I was hoping we could get in. Oh, it's probably in his backpack. All right. Please have the clicker. Well, I grabbed the wrong clicker, so I just to do it for Mike. Oh, okay. I grabbed my house clicker. Now the brake light came on. It's starting to work. You gonna try to switch it off, see if it comes back is on? The fuel, uh, is the fuel gauge shot? 
Yeah, it always reads empty. So. Okay. Yeah, but it was topped off, right? You, yeah, I feel like that. This thing's got to be got to do 25 miles a gallon, I would think, with the diesel and the manual. How's the power? It was bad. It's acceptable? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, no, it wasn't bad at all. Okay. Mike was uh, Mike was saying that I wasn't gonna like it, but I, I disagree. Really? And the wobble? That right, that was bad, wobble. but. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, I still think you should turn it off and see if it restarts. Best opportunity. <laughs> right? sure. I have to wonder how many people on uh, I-95 were coming up behind this car, going, "Why? Why does it have a? Is that a Portuguese license plate or?" Polish or what? Uh, it finally gets to drive in, although we don't think the shop's going to be necessary, so hopefully. That <laughs> just looks so amazing with the Euro tag on the back. Our there's another rover at the shop. How about that? As if there haven't been enough here. Very cool. Let's see if she restarts. <laughs> Whoa! Battery got charged, I guess. The bare minimum! <laughs> it starts! Well, y'all, it's been a long evening. Uh, we got pizza on the way, should be here shortly. I can't believe this made it after our little difficulties there up in uh, Northern Virginia, but it did. And it was actually a really nice ride, I must say. Belies the fact that it has like 280,000 kilometers on it. It rode nicely, did over 70 miles an hour in traffic. Hey, I think the pizza's here. Sweet. I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks once again for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this latest episode of Rover Rescue and the diesel manual two-door classic. Something we never got here. None of those things were available here. Keep watching and subscribing and liking and commenting. I love when y'all do that. And I really appreciate all the new subscribers. Thanks again for watching.